again, thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith. I'm also known as Janome Man on the Janome Life blog. And I'm the National uh, Consumer Education Manager of Janome Canada. So today I'm going to kick off this series. I'm going to be coming to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. live. But if you don't happen to join us live, if you can't, um, this will be stored in the stories for 24 hours. And then it's going to be posted on our Janome HQ YouTube channel. Uh, right now I've got about 20 videos there. So you can tune in to uh, see what's already there. But again, all of these presentations as I go through the alphabet will be posted to the Janome HQ YouTube channel. So lots of opportunity to tune in whenever it's convenient. So today I'm here live doing A to Z with Janome. So, you know, we've got all these fabulous pressure feet and attachments and accessories with our Janome machines, but it's a lot to fully take in to uh, how to use them all and what they go with which machines. So I hope to shed some light on that with you today. So, uh, you know, it's wonderful when you're thinking of, uh, you know, creating something and when the stars all kind of align. In my stash, as I was creating this whole series, I found this very cool panel, which is the alphabet, uh, designed by the very fabulous, uh, talented Tamara Kate, is a Canadian uh, designer from Montreal. She designs fabric with Michael Miller. Uh, she also teaches at all the major quilt shows and such. Uh, she's also a sweetheart. Uh, but so I had this panel of her fabric for, again, probably about two years. And I thought, oh, well, great, I'm going to make this whole big wall hanging, which then you will see as you tune in to these presentations over the next uh, 26 lives, which is collectively nine weeks, uh, that we're going to spend time together. Then you're going to see all of this get cut up, and I'm going to create a whole big wall hanging for all the samples of all the feet and techniques and accessories that we're going to talk about. So um, that should be very fun and exciting. And it'll keep me on track too, because I've got a ton of UFOs. So now our regular A, so today we're starting off with A. Uh, this is our regular A foot that comes with all of our Janome machines. It's the regular zigzag foot. Uh, so yes, I could have started off with that, but I thought, oh no, I'm going to show you something even extra special. But I will share with you this little tip on our A foot. Now, not all of our A feet have this little black button. On my little 5mm, 28-year-old Junomi, for example, I don't have this little black button on my A foot, but most of the A feet have this. And what that little black button is, do you see if I push it, this bar comes across. Can you all see that? And that helps when I click in my feet. You know, I love most Janome feet just snap into place. Now on the back of this foot holder, you could see there's a little notch there. And where that comes into play is as I'm going up over a bulky side seam, think of hemming jeans and you're sewing and your presser foot starts going, whoops, going up like that on an angle. You see how easy they are to snap on and off. So as my presser foot goes up on an angle there, this is where I start getting skip stitches. I could potentially break a needle because the needle is flexing. I want to keep my presser foot level for optimum stitches. So this is where this little black button comes into play. I can easily just press that in as I go over that bulky side seam and that locks my presser foot level into place. So I'm not going to get skip stitches, I'm not going to break any needle. It's a really good safety feature, but it's also again going to give us the best stitch quality going over. So can you all see that? Is that good? Okay, fantastic. So again, quick little uh, tip there of our A foot. But today we're going to do our Janome HQ Instagram today is brought to you by the letter A, uh, specifically the AP foot, which is our special applique foot. It is an optional presser foot, doesn't come with any of our machines, so that's why I thought it would be a cool one to share with you today. Now typically if you want to come down here to the machine with me, typically when we are doing applique, we might use the F foot, which comes with a number of our machines. And it is our satin stitch foot, and it's clear, and it's got this channel on the 
underside to allow our decorative stitches to form and go over. Uh, we also have the F2 foot now, which is an open toe version of it. Now, some machines come with it, like the uh, Continental M7 that I'm demoing on today. This comes with, um, this foot comes with the machine, but if not, it's available as a separate blister pack. And there's a nine millimeter version and a seven millimeter version, I believe. So it would fit whatever machine. And again, there's a groove at the back for our decorative stitches. But our applique foot here, it comes in the blister pack. And again, mine says nine millimeters because I know I've got a nine millimeter wide opening on my needle plate. But you can also get this applique foot in a seven millimeter version as well. So double check with your Janome dealer. And on the back of all of our blister packs, we always have the instructions on how to use it, how to attach it. Now this applique foot is very cute. You may see the difference of these two. This is our, uh, well, I'll switch that out. <laughs> this is our regular F foot, and this is our applique foot. Then you can see the F foot is a little longer. Its toes are a little longer. Uh, the applique foot, what makes it so special is it's shorter. So it is much easier to go around curves and in tight spots because it, it's a lower profile. And as well, it has a big channel here at the back. There's nothing at the, at the back of the foot, actually. There's a little bit of a channel here in between at the needle opening, but all of this is open. So it's really easy to, again, go up and around your applique, up and around curves. At the front of the foot, there is some very handy markings, which hopefully you can see. There is a marking here on the right. There is a marking here in the middle and there's a marking here on the left. So that really helps line up your needle and line up your fabric. And maybe you can see up here, it says AP. One thing I love about all Janome feet, they're all numbered or they're all uh, lettered. So I can easily tell which one this is. So here is the bar which uh, snaps into our foot holder as usual, but there's a secondary bar here at the back. And why that is important if I try on our foot holder just to snap this into play like all other feet, you can see it doesn't fit. It's not gonna work. So I need to first, in that little notch in the back of the foot holder, I first need to clip it into the back and then pivot it up into front. And again, it all just snaps off like usual uh, for Janome feet. You just click that little lever and the foot will come off. So again, I, I click it into the back first and then pivot it around and click it up to the front. So that's how to attach it. Uh, it's very similar, the same thing to our button foot, the T foot. So I'm gonna snap this on the machine very quickly and easily and get started. Sometimes I use one of my tools to help just get it into place and I can get rid of these guys and get rid of these guys. Oh, I could put these feet in this fabulous accessory drawer, which is one of my favorite features of this uh, M uh, Continental M7 is having this cute little accessory drawer. So I'm going to tuck those into place. So, and I'll get rid of this. So when I want to do applique, I've got some beautiful, I hope, applique here. This is again some more Tamara Cake fabric of this quilt I've been working on for quite a while. And you can see I've got a variety of applique stitches used. And on this sample, this is one I did not do, actually, my mother found this for me at a thrift store, and it is a big Dresden plate uh, quilt, and the uh, sewer uh, sewed these wedges of the Dresden plate together and then hand appliqued this down. Uh, I can see her, uh, they're almost like whip stitches, a little white thread, so it matches the background, but still, I can see her stitching uh, to applique this down. So personally, I'd rather use my machine for applique it is a lot quicker and easier and a lot better results too from what I could do. Now in our applique, we can do a variety of stitches. Pretty much any of our Janome machine will do applique. And that's one of the most requested categories actually of all the machines as you go up the Janome line, they have more and more applique stitches. So people really love applique. Now I could use just a regular old straight stitch, which is just here, it looks perfectly fine. And in fact, this has become a more modern way for applique, it's just regular old straight stitch. Or I could use a zigzag stitch as well uh, to 
affix my applique, and applique is just a, a French word meaning like to apply to. So I'm applying this denim patch over my other fabric. So I could use a zigzag for that, or I can use my little stylus here, and I can make my zigzag stitch tighter. I can shorten the distance of that zigzag stitch and make it more of a satin stitch. And I can, which is here, so that's a very tight zigzag. And I can also change the width of my stitches. So here's very narrow, and then I can go out and make it even wider. So your applique can also be a decorative element, not just a functional element. So I have some samples here of, this is a very fine, delicate uh, applique stitch. You barely see it with matching thread. Or here's a applique stitch you really see uh, prominently because I've used some thick uh, 12 weight thread. So again, it can become a more decorative uh, element. Now I can also use applique when I'm quilting. Here I've got my little quilt sandwich of my uh, quilt top, my batting, and my backing. I've used matching thread, so I barely see it on the top. And here I've, uh, you can see the bobbin thread. So again, it's depending on whatever look you want it to be. It could be decorative as well, or you could blend it into your fabric so you don't see it at all. So it's depending whatever look that you want. And there's a variety of stitches that you can use. Now, when I'll talk about thread right off the top, because you'll see here on this uh, sample that it's a thicker thread. So currently right now in my machine I've got this iris 40 weight polyester embroidery thread is typically what I use this for. Uh, but I like using it for again when I want to show off my applique. So it's um, very shiny and beautiful. Uh, this is a thread that Janome distributes so you can check with your Janome dealer to see if they carry it. And as well, Janome Canada is also a distributor of Madeira thread, so you can check your Janome dealer if they have, this is our Madeira Aero Flock thread. Now this is thread that we typically use in the loopers of our serger, and it's very uh, fuzzy thread. Um, you may be familiar with the term woolly nylon if you're a serger user. This is not nylon though, this is polyester. It's woolly poly, so it's got more texture to it. So this would be cool to use in your needle to have more of a decorative element to your applique. And now sometimes with our decorative threads, especially if they're really fine, um, they may just, you know, pool and puddle around the spool. So that's why I have this thread net on, that that's a good way to kind of tame that thread. Or you may find it just flies off the, the spool. So if you have this thread net on, it'll stop that from coming off so easily. And then again, here is my 12 weight thread, very heavy. So thread is a little confusing. The higher the number, the finer the thread. The lower the number, like this is a 12 weight. So that means it's a thicker thread. So it's a little confusing, but um, again, very cool to experiment. When you go do your applique and any of your sewing, you want to make yourself little samples like this. And in fact, um, when I am teaching classes at the Sewing and Learning Center, uh, we're going to be doing exactly this, make our little reference binders. So as we go through the various stitches, I label them all and I say what kind of settings I do in my machine, because I'm not always going to be doing these every single day. So it's nice to have as a reference. So incidentally, if you would like to sign up to the uh, mailing list for the Sewing and Learning Center classes, whenever we get back to doing that, uh, the email you can send me is classes at genome dash canadacom So that's classes at genome dash canadacom So that'll be the mailing list. And then again, as soon as we get back up and running, I can send you uh, what classes we're doing and when and the whole schedule. So I can do uh, applique again on any of our machines, but a number of mach our machines also have more applique stitches. So I can scroll through my machine either by um, just scrolling through the little arrow or I can select by category up here these little curlicues for example is my uh, category to find my decorative stitches and quilting stitches and specifically there's my applique 
so I can scroll through. I have 20 applique stitches on the Continental M7, so lots to choose. So I can scroll through that way, or I can go up here to that uh, little piece of paper, and this just shows all my 20 applique stitches all together. So lots of variety from which to choose. Evelyn wants to know, does it matter what machine you use to do applique? <laughs> uh, no, again, any of our machine can do it. As you go up the Janome line, uh, again, sort of like our entry levels may ha have one or two applique stitches. That might be your traditional uh, buttonhole or uh, blanket stitch. And then, which is like about that stitch there, just traditional uh, blanket stitch. And then as you go up the line, there'll be more and more uh, stitches added to the machines. But again, any zigzag would be applique. Uh, any decorative stitch really could be an applique stitch as well. And again, the special applique foot is available for both 9mm and 7mm. So uh, pretty much any machine can do this. Now another way I can find my applique stitches, a number of our machines have the sewing applications, which is this little t-shirt up here. So I can select sewing applications and it's basically the machine asking me, what do you want to do? So in this case, uh, maybe I want to do a rolled hem and this is something we're going to do next week actually, uh, next Monday uh, to do a rolled hem. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. So whatever I want to do, uh, or I can go up here and select my quilting and decorative stitches. I want to do applique. Oh look, there's a category already selected for me. The machine has already selected the optimum stitch width, length, pressure, tension, everything. Now I can go back in and refine it, which we will do a little bit to show you, but again, the machine's already set up for me. So I can just quickly go to my sewing applications, go into applique, and I can select whichever of these stitches I wish. Now I will just bring this little sample down here to show you. Uh, the M means middle needle position. The R means right needle position. And if you want to cast your eyes down here, I will lower the foot and I hope you'll be able to see the needle move as I go and scroll through these various applique stitches on the screen. Right now my needle is just a little bit uh, to the right of that middle notch. So when I click the R, the next selection over, did you see the needle moved way over to the right? And as I select the zigzag stitch, for example, then my needle's going to move way over here to the left. So that's why having these little notches on the foot really help. So there's a left notch, a middle notch, and a right notch. So that helps you line up your uh, stitches as well as line up your fabric of the applique. Now traditionally when I do applique, this is just my blanket stitch that I've selected. And it's going to, I want to select that one to bring it way over to the right. Because normally when I do applique, I line up the needle. Sorry, I need to reach over here. I'm going to line up the needle so then to the right, it's going to be right off the edge of the fabric. And then when it stitches, it's going to go right along that edge. And then it's going to swing into the fabric. So that's what I like to do for my applique typically. But again, it's whatever look you want to do. So if I wanted to start a little bit in, for example, on this um, applique here, I didn't want to applique over this fancy decorative edge. I wanted my applique to start in about an, an eighth of an inch. So I can again use the uh, markings on my foot. And instead of having my fabric up against that right groove, I can move my fabric, sorry, I need to get my needle out of there. I can move my fabric to the, um, whoops, I want to go the other way. I can move my fabric now so then it's going to be slightly over. Again, about an eighth of an inch and I can line it up with one of the grooves on the foot. And as well, I can change where my stitch is going to. If it's going to start in the middle of the foot and now swing over, so then it's going to be about an eighth of an inch from the edge of my fabric. So I could have a fancy decorative edge like this, or maybe I want to fringe this all and have that as a decorative element. So it's again, whatever kind of uh, applique you want to do. 
So another way to find uh, applique stitches is going back into our sewing applications. Then you'll see this little plus presser foot icon. So I click that and I find some, these are additional optional presser feet that are available. And again, we've got seven millimeter versions as well as nine millimeter. Uh, some of them even have five millimeters. So depending on your machine, you can do a number of these techniques. So this sample, these first uh, six samples, um, six presser feet are what's currently in the sewing applications of like the 15,000 and the 9,400. So here, uh, for example, are the uh, pin top foot. And here is the cording foot down here. And here's a sample I use the beading foot to put on this yarn. And here are some decorative stitches I use the border guide foot to put on. So we're gonna go through all of these in upcoming Janome HQ Instagram lives. So we'll go through all of those. And again, they're all in your uh, plus presser foot icon of your sewing applications menu. Now the Continental M7 has three additional sewing applications based on the additional presser feet, one of which is applique. So I can click on that and here it's taken me to some applique stitches. It shows my little AP applique foot. So it's all set up and ready to go. Now I did mention briefly the 15,000. If you're a 15,000 owner and you have this beautiful accessory tray that comes with the machine and you see all the slots for the various presser feet that come with the machine, we have some additional slots over here and you may be wondering what's with all those extra slots? Well, our AP foot, for example, our applique foot is one of the missing presser feet. These are all additional optional presser feet which are available from your Janome dealer uh, if you're not sure if your Janome dealer is open right now, by the way, you can go on to the, uh, like in Canada, go to janome.ca and up at the top, uh, it says find a dealer. And then you can click on that. It'll list all the dealers in Canada, type in your province and postal code, and then you can contact to see if your dealer um, is open, if they have these presser feet. Uh, many of them are doing a curbside pickup or again, could ship them to you. So that's very cool. Now, even if you're not a 15,000 owner, you can purchase the 15,000 accessory case from your Janome dealer. And all of those trays to hold the presser feet will fit in here. There's three of them. And there's some additional storage in here as well. So it's a really cute little train case is what I call it. Um, so a great way to have all your feet together. So that's available from your Janome dealer. So if you want to come down here to the needle and, or no, we will come up here to the screen and I'm going to show you some adjustments you can do for your applique. If I hit my adjustment button here, I have my usual stitch width and that's making the stitch either more narrow or I do plus and that's making the stitch more wide. You'll see the teeth of that applique are coming wider. So if I'm using uh, some dimensional applique, let's say I've stuffed it with some batting to make it really thick, I want to use that longer bite. Or again, I'm using some decorative thread, I want to uh, show it off a little more. Uh, if I don't want it to show at all, maybe this is when I'm going to turn that bite down really low, so then it's not going to bite very much into the fabric. So um, whenever I'm doing any adjustments to it, we've got the default button, so it'll click it right back to normal. So you don't have to remember anything. So that's my width, this is my length, this is my um, uh, tension of my uh, needle thread and my bobbin. When I want to tighten my needle thread tension, then I want to use the plus sign. Now, many times people ask me, they get confused, is it plus, is it minus? So if you wanna add tension to your needle, you want to use the plus sign. If you wanna take tension away from your needle, you wanna minus it. Uh, now, the same is over here for your presser foot pressure. When we're doing applique, particularly around curves, and especially if I'm gonna go through my quilted layers here, I wanna lighten the pressure of my presser foot. Normally, we have auto uh, tension on many of our uh, computerized machines, especially. 
um, then it will be set at auto. But when I'm doing applique, again, particularly around curves, it's helpful if I lessen the pressure on my presser foot. So I want to minus it. If I want more press pressure on my presser foot, then I would use the plus arrow. So plus is to add, minus is to subtract. And again, many times people ask me about that. Now, while I'm here, then I will show you this um, adjustment icon is the needle drop or the baseline. And what this is, as I adjust this number, you will see this whole line of stitching is going to start moving over to the left. So I'm going to start minusing it. And can you see? I'll go slow. Can you see it's moving along on the screen? Now, if you want to cast your eyes down at the needle here, that this started off at the right. It started off in the right position, but now it's down to center needle position. And again, I can tell because I've got that little middle notch there, which is about an eighth of an inch from the edge of my fabric. So again, if I wanted my applique to start in a little bit from the edge of my fabric, like in this sample here, then all I have to do is just move that whole line of stitching, that whole baseline over. To do that, I haven't changed the stitch width at all. Now, again, this is a lot of information. The nice thing, if your machine is capable of these adjustments, it will say so in your manual. So again, always check your manuals. If you can't find your manual, maybe it's been a few years, you can go on the genomi.ca or genomi.com website, scroll to the bottom, it says support, click on that, it'll take you to a tab that says manuals, then click on that and there's manuals for a number of machines. There's even a retired section so you can find machines no longer in productions. So that'll help you walk through the adjustments. Now also, more information. <laughs> now the fancy Continental M7 has this cool app called AccuSpark. So you download it onto your phone or onto your iPad. This is an app that will also work with Android. So yes, you can go to the App Store, type in Genomi Sewing Machines, up comes this app. It's a free app. And what you do is you're using the QR code that's built into the machine and I can scan, the QR code is built into the app, and I can scan that app, and it's gonna give me the information about the stitch that I've selected. But it's also going to give me all the stitches related to what I have selected, so it shows me the various options and where I'm gonna position my needle, and then it also goes through, oh, how do I wind my bobbin? How do I adjust my stitches? How do I put in my bobbin, for example? All of that information is built into the AccuSpark app. So the cool thing is, even if you don't own the fabulous Continental M7 and uh, you don't have a machine that has this QR reader on it, you can still use the AccuSpark app. You just won't use the QR scanning tool portion of it, but all the information as far as how to wind the bobbin, insert the needle, all these applique stitches, all of that information is built into the app. So any machine really could use that information. And as well, for more information, you can go to our Genomi Life blog, type in your browser, Genomi Life, and there's a search box off to the right, so you'll find a ton of posts on anything Genomi on how to make all these adjustments to your machine. Uh, basically, another big tool when you're, uh, or a tip when you're applicating, you want to make sure that the swing of your needle is going off to the right. Typically, when we're applicating, we would have the, again, the needle would go right up against the edge of the fabric. So as I'm stitching along, I want to make sure that the needle is going off the edge of the fabric, and then it's going to swing to the left on my fabric. Now this is particularly important to uh, pay attention to what stitch you select and as you're getting up to the corner. You want to make sure that, again, your needle is to the right before you pivot that corner 
And again, depending on your stitch that you've selected, some of them go back and forth a couple of times. So you want to always do a test sample and see where it is in that sequence of going back and forth, back and forth. If you turn your corner too quickly and you're not in the correct sequence, then when you turn and pivot, you could end up going back off the fabric. Or if your needle is um, to the left when you turn the corner, it'll swing back right, maybe a little too far under your fabric. So it's really important to do a little test and pay attention of where your needle is swinging at the time. So here I'm gonna stop with my needle in the right, and then up here on my screen, I like using my auto pivot feature. Many of our machines have this. When it is selected, it's in yellow, so you know it's active. Uh, many of our machines also have a knee lift, so this is also a great time to use it to then have your presser foot jump up automatically as soon as you take your foot off the power foot, and then you can pivot your fabric easily. Now, while I'm up here, I'm going to show you this cool cornering tool that many of our machines have as well. So if I select my cornering tool, can you see on the icon of how that corner uh, is basically a mirror image of each other, that by selecting this corner tool, automatically when I pivot my fabric, the uh, applique stitch, whatever stitch I have chosen, is going to start from the beginning. So then my corner is going to turn out beautifully. So I have that, maybe you can see here on my sample. So this corner, you know, has come out perfectly just like that corner. And these two corners here are exact mirror image of each other. So when I pivoted, I selected this uh, cornering tool. So then when I pivoted my fabric, it started off at the beginning again of that applique pattern. So it's very fun to do. Again, experiment, a great way to learn with your machine and do some fun decorative things. There is so much more I could share with you, but again, I'm already seeing conveniently by the time on my sewing machine <laughs> that already I've gone over my time. Uh, so just to wrap up, I'd like to say that if you're not quilting through three layers here, like I am with my batting and my um, backing, then I like using a stabilizer on the back of your applique. So that will help support your stitches. So. Again, Genome Canada is distributor of Madeira, so again, you can double check with your Genome dealer and see maybe they have this fabulous Madeira Stabilizer Starter Pack, and there's a booklet about how to use all the um, stabilizers and when. And I love using this Cotton Stable, for example. It's a tearaway, but you can see by the little iron icon that it's got little sticky glue dots maybe you can see with the reflection but so this will stick to your fabric and yet it's also a tear away so after you're done your applique you could remove the bulk of the uh, tear away from where you don't need it now another of my favorites is this cotton soft which has cotton fibers in it um, but no adhesive so again it's a tear away it'll just easily come away uh, when in doubt, you can also use the good old standby coffee filters, uh, maybe. Now, personally, I wouldn't embroider with these, but I know some people do. Uh, but coffee filters are good in a pinch, so if you don't have any scraps of a stabilizer left over, use those in a pinch to, again, help support those Evelyn stitches. Evelyn is asking, uh, when you get to the corner, should you reset it to the start, the next side, if you do not have those options? Yeah, if you don't have that cornering feature, then uh, you've got the little arrow, the regular arrow that would be up here like that. So then, yes, you could hit that regular arrow and then that <clears throat> will reset it to start at the beginning. It'll do a little lock stitch as if it's starting from total scratch, uh, which is fine. It'll be right in the corner and then it will start from the beginning. So, yeah, you could totally use that. Uh, another thing you could use to help keep your applique in place, uh, my favorite is our um, Artistic Tack Temporary Adhesive Spray. A little goes a long way and you can see that low VOCs, uh, so it's not going to stink up your house. Uh, so a little goes a long way, so I like uh, spraying that on the back of my applique. Or of course you can also use the paperback uh, fusible web. You may be able to see the little um, glare 
I don't know, but uh, that I've ironed that on to the back of my fabric with the paper and then I peel that paper off and then stick it down on my patch for especially this is good when I want to do raw edge applique as this is. I've just cut my fabric so this is a raw edge so by having some of that um, paperback adhesive or again my artistic tack spray that'll help prevent this from raveling if I don't want to do the traditional way of you know turning it under or backing the piece with another piece of fabric and flipping it out and all of that so it's depending on what applique stitch you'll use when really depends on what you're appliquing so that's the the fun thing about doing lots of samples so i would like to remind you all that if you've missed this live presentation or you've tuned in late uh, you can tune in to the genomi hq stories uh, for the next 24 hours and this video will be there and then as well I'm going to edit it and put this on the Janome uh, HQ YouTube channel so you'll be able to see it whenever and hopefully you'll come back and join me live Wednesday 2 p.m. for the next letter of our alphabet being B. So today's letter was uh, today's Janome Instagram Live, Janome HQ Instagram Live, was brought to you by the letter A. So here is my little sample from the applique AP foot and using a variety of applique stitches. Uh, another tip, if you're doing a layered applique like I have done here, you want to start with your background first. So I've first appliqued this circle, then I appliqued this square on top of that. And then this little lion I uh, appliqued on top of that. So again, you're you're doing it, uh, building it up, starting from the back, building it forward. And again, the applique foot, a little skinny foot, helped uh, going around this curve, uh, a lot less pivoting, and I could uh, get in really tight. So it's a great little foot to have. Again, check with your Janome dealer, and I will see you Wednesday at two. Thanks very much. Then thank you all. Bye.